new college hockey season has begun and we're here to tell you all about it on North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. Coming up, we will look back at North Dakota's successful season opener against Niagara with head coach Brad Berry and take you to my home state with new UND defenseman Brady Ferner. First though, it is time for this week's installment of UND Insider's outstanding web series, Through These Doors. Through These Doors is presented by Gate City Bank. 20 years ago, Ralph Engelstead Arena opened its doors. Throughout the years, the Ralph has hosted many events from concerts to curling, tennis to basketball, and of course, hockey. First 20 years have been extraordinary, and we're looking forward to the next 20 in the finest hockey facility in the world with the greatest fans in college hockey. For new members of the UND hockey team, playing in the REA for the first time has exceeded expectations. It was a dream come true. Um, in warm-ups, like the little kids standing on the glass, like just looking at them, I could just remember myself being in that position and now to be on the ice and fulfill a dream, it's pretty awesome. It's honestly hard to explain. There's not really many words that um, can describe it. it. Obviously it was super cool and it's been my dream since I was a little kid but um, yeah just going out there and hearing the fans and hearing the pregame videos that are playing out there from down here in the tunnel is, it was a super cool experience. I've played uh, two games where I've been on the other side of it so uh, definitely definitely more comforting uh, being on the home side um, just when you look up and the stands are absolutely jam-packed and Having everybody cheering, cheering you on and just knowing that you have that support from them, um, it means a lot and uh, definitely have to take it in you know, the first couple times because it's, it's really special. I've never uh, played in the Ralph, so I've, never, I've, I've heard about it, but I've never witnessed it um, like some of the other teammates I have here I have. So um, I've heard a lot of things. I've heard about you know, the, the, the stadium size and uh, fireworks and all that, so it was pretty cool to witness it for the first time. The fireworks going off, the crowd cheering, the, uh, the chants they have going on, the, just the overall atmosphere, the buzz, you know, this is a hockey town, hockey community, and the culture they've built here with, uh, with the fans is truly incredible, for sure. 20 years of playing in the Ralph has left those close to the program with great memories. Yeah, it was, it was really neat. Um, obviously, playing at the program, uh, always had the passion with the fans there, um, even in the old building, which was great. And then uh, to see the excitement over the new building and then to watch it come up, even as a player, uh, was pretty neat just to know what the future held for the program. Um, still remember as a senior when most of the framing got done and we were able to get in. Um, Coach Blaze took our whole team through through the building and kind of showing us everything and um, you know all of us were you know our jobs just kind of dropped as players of going wow like you know <laughs> look, look at what uh, look at what they're going to have here in the next couple of years so 
um, was really neat to see and then to be able to experience it as a coach uh, has just been fantastic. Just on all of them, just coming and I know me and my younger brother would come and then we'd go home and we'd replay the game in the basement whether it's mini hockey or he put on the pads and we'd play with the tennis ball. So it was it just all, it was just a dream to go home and play it and act like you were playing in those games. Uh, <laughs> I think it's been huge for our program, um, even in the old building. Um, so I, I had good friends that I played with growing up that played on opposing programs, and you know we'd, we'd always kind of chat after a series. And I still remember one of them saying, "Man, I, I hate coming here to play because your fans are all over us right away." And um, you know I, I think it's it's a big deal. Not you know not every program uh, is again. Um, has our energy of our fans and, and you know the number of fans and what we bring there and, and again being being able to play in front of close to 12,000 people that are actively in the game is a pretty fun thing and, and I know even for our own players um, you know it's the first time they've seen that their freshman year and um, seeing that level of energy seeing the number of fans as something coming from junior programs that kids typically don't see so um, even right away for our own guys it can be uh, can be a little interesting adjusting, so um, such, a, such a neat thing that uh, we have here at, at North Dakota and at, and at the Ralph, and, and again, just brings such a fun element. From then to now, UND Hockey and the REA has promoted the growth of student athletes to prepare them for the future. My mom's parents live here, and my uncle lives here, my other uncle lives in Fargo, so it's just cool to come back, obviously being away for a few years. Um, it's super nice being back here for college for the next four. Yeah, for me, um, choosing to go to North Dakota for my next year um, with COVID, um, it was just kind of an opportunity to develop and play at a top program. Um, the, the track record they have here of, of moving guys on to the next level, the coaching staff here, obviously the, uh, the atmosphere playing in front of a packed house at the Ralph. Um, it's just something that uh, I'm extremely excited to be a part of, and um, so far, so good. Well, I don't want to, obviously, every kid, every college wants to play professional hockey, so I mean, that's like a number one thing that everybody wants to do, and UND, probably out of more than any other college, is known for that, so I mean, that's the exciting part about it, is that I'm in a situation to get there, but I mean, if that doesn't work out, I mean, you have an education to fall back on, so that's the most important thing as well, so. It's just kind of like a best of both worlds. Good stuff as always from Cassie Niles and the entire Through These Doors crew. There is much more on the way on this week's North Dakota Hockey Central, including a breakdown of UND's comprehensive sweep on opening weekends with head coach Brad Berry. That's next. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central. We are proud to be joined this week and every week on the show by UND head coach Brad Berry, who comes to us now from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, good to see you after a positive opening weekend for your team. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It was uh, great to be here and after a good weekend. Let's rewind now back to that opening weekend and your series against Niagara of the Atlantic Hockey Association. What was your message to the team as you entered the first games of a new campaign? Yeah, you know, after an exhibition game, now entering the games that really count, it's game on. And, uh, you know, our message was that even though it's non-conference and it's Niagara, it's, uh, it's having the mentality like we're playing in the NCHC. Uh, you know, the pairwise standings are, are indicative of, uh, you know, who makes the national tournament out at the end of the year. And, you know, we want to be one of those 16 teams. And you, you have to take a positive step in those non-conference games and win the majority, if not all of them. And, and, uh, and, and to make sure that we get off to a great start. Well, you did get off to a great start on both nights, both in terms of your team's performance, as well as on the scoreboard. What keyed those strong first periods? Just kind of having that mentality, like number one, you know, I think our guys knew that what it, what it takes to play in the Ralph Ingolstead Arena. We, we played in front of a packed house uh, against uh, Bemidji in an ex exhibition game. And now our newcomers to our group kind of knew what that felt like and, and just go play free out there and, and play with, you know, in attack mode. And I thought our guys did it starting on Friday night. They really came out and it always helps when you get a couple goals early to, uh, to keep momentum. So kind of just proud of the way our guys just kind of dove into the game and they didn't dip their toe in the water. You would build on those strong starts in both games and win 6-2 Friday and 4-0 Saturday. You had to be encouraged by the complete performances your team displayed on both nights. 
Yeah, I, I thought, you know, both nights were a little bit different. Friday night, I thought, uh, you know, we took it from start to finish and played played a really good 60-minute game. And, you know, I think on Saturday, you know, you always know when you win that first game on Friday that the second day is going to be a little bit tougher. And uh, and, and I thought they made a push. Uh, Niagara made a push on Saturday, the first period, and, and we had to kind of weather the storm a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's nice to get that goal right away, but, you know, they kept pushing, and I thought we got better as the second and third period went on. You could point to a number of players who made a difference over the weekend, but let's single out Lake State transfer Ashton Calder, who had two goals on Friday and finished the weekend with four points. How would you grade his UND debut? Yeah, I thought he did a he did a really good job of coming in in here and you know getting off on the right foot and starting and making the impact in our group. You know, five on five and power play, he took uh, took advantage of that, and uh, that's what you need with you know guys that have played a little bit in college hockey. He's he's guy has experience coming from Lake State, playing in those key situations, and you can tell he's excited to be here. He's hungry to to make an impact, and he surely did it that first weekend. Just a factory, isn't it? Well, the defense wasn't just scoring. With the help of Zach Driscoll, they held Niagara in check all weekend. What stood out to you about your defensive efforts on Friday and Saturday against the Purple Eagles? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, just to be quite honest, I, I thought we did a very good job playing playing good, sound defensive game five on five. But there were situations in both games where, you know, we would give up an outnumbered rush or a breakaway. Uh, and that's to be expected, I think, early in the year as far as, you know, guys getting used to play with each other, and, you know, having certainty in our game, making sure that we, we, we cover up for each other. But I'll tell you what, you know, when you talk about good defense, part of that is Zach Driscoll. Like, Zach Driscoll was outstanding this weekend in both games. And, and uh, again, like I said, he was there to, to bail us out in some situations where, uh, you know, he had some grade-A looks coming at him. So, again, we'll tighten those areas up. But, again, I thought it was a pretty good first weekend here defensively. Your special teams were on point all weekend as well. What did you like from the play of those units? Starting where we left off last year, I thought our, you know, our special teams were very good last year. They were a big reason why we, we were number one in pairwise rankings last year. And, and just having the pride and, and uh, commitment level in practicing, uh, which carries over into the games. And you know, I thought our, our special team units have done a good job of preparing over the, over the short season we've had so far and uh, transferring that into the game. And I think the other part too is guys, you know, us coaches, we work with them in practice on what we want to see and how we want to develop it, but they work on it on their own too. The power play units go out there and they try to build chemistry, you know, even when the coaches aren't on the ice. And I think that's a big deal of having success. You mentioned the chemistry with 14 new faces on this team, many of whom you'll be depending on for production right away. How important was this sweep and the dominant nature of it for this group's confidence now moving forward? Well, it is big, you know, uh, you know, it's one thing to win a game on Friday night, but it's another thing to try to put two together and win back to back. And you know, what we talked about early on before the uh, Saturday game, after we won on Friday, and we talked about it uh, you know, after the Saturday game, it's, it's crucial in trying to build momentum into uh, the end of the season, meaning that there is a process and a journey to get to the end of the season, but it's never too early to try to build that, I guess, mentality of winning two games. Because at the end of the year, in, in the uh, conference playoffs in the national tournament, you have to win both games on the weekend to advance and then eventually win a national championship. So just having that, that confidence of, of winning two games, uh, you never can come too early. Brad, you'll stay in non-conference this coming week with the big home-and-home -home series against a Bemidji State team you just played a week ago. How will that familiarity help in terms of preparation? Well, now, you know, you can say all you want on, on how you know, good a team Bemidji is, you know, to our players and how heavy and hard they play and, and what type of system and structure they play. But unless you really experience it like we did in the exhibition game, words probably don't mean a thing. So our guys have the, have the recollection of, of knowing now how Bemidji plays the game. Very good team, very hard team, and we have to be our ultimate best to, to win and win those games. Friday night's game is at the Sanford Center. How do you approach the logistics of a road game like this in an arena that's really just down the road, especially when you're coming back to play in Grand Forks the following night? It's gonna be a different environment. They have very good, loud, passionate fan base as well. You know, we're going into a road road setting and I think it's gonna be great for our guys to experience that because a week from now, we, a week from then, we go into Quinnipiac, then we go into Nashville to play the Hall of Fame game and we're gonna play in some some other environments down the road. So it's good to get our feet wet and, and play in a, in a really good building against a really good team. It's always a fun matchup against the Beavers. We're looking forward to seeing how it all plays out this weekend. Brad, congrats again on a strong start to the new season and best of luck to you and your group this coming weekend. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. Looking forward to the week ahead.
One member of UND's defensive core who looked to play a big role this weekend comes from a place not known as a hockey hotbed. We're going to take you to Dakota Dunes, South Dakota with Brady Ferner when North Dakota Hockey Central returns. As you may have heard, there are 14 newcomers on UND's roster this year, the largest influx of new talent to the program in one offseason since the 1970s. One of those new faces is junior Brady Ferner, a defenseman who spent his first two years of college at RPI before moving back to the Dakotas. Brady was kind enough to show us around his joint hometowns of Dakota Dunes and Sioux City this summer. Take a look. When people ask, I'll typically say like I'm from Sioux City because people have more of an idea where that's at typically, but then they like see my license or everything, they're like, oh, South Dakota, like that's not Iowa. And then you got to explain to them, Nebraska's here, Iowa's here, and then South Dakota's just on that side. My dad's from Saskatchewan, so he, I mean, just being from Canada, he's kind of born into the whole hockey atmosphere and up there, that's the sport. So. Just growing up, I uh, played all different sorts of sports, but hockey I had the passion for, and typically the guys that grew up playing hockey around here are huge fans of North Dakota. And when North Dakota played Minnesota on FSN, it seemed like every Friday night that they played, I was really into those games, and just playing up in youth tournaments there, anytime we were up there, we'd try and catch a game and go see the Ralph, just special place. And that's kind of the meeting point between where our family is in Saskatchewan and here, so I was up in Grand Forks quite a bit and was always a huge fan of the fighting suit growing up. Hockey's not the sport here, really. Uh, the youth hockey here is uh, very minimal. Um, that kind of forced me to make the decision to move away at a younger age, but um, obviously the USHL team is here as well, so that was always a goal of mine to come back and play there, and was fortunate enough to do so. Yeah, so the player entrance, we would usually park in this uh, parking lot, like right over here. Growing up, too, like we'd play like us, like little youth guys, we'd play cross ice and intermission at games here and stuff like that. And then um, as I got older, some of the coaching staff guys would let me come out and practice with the team and stuff whenever I was back in town. Pretty neat place. A lot of good memories in here. Who were some of the guys you looked up to? I was a big fan of Neil Pionk, but I don't know if I should say that now just because he played at Duluth. <laughs> but he was one of my favorite, just being a defenseman. She's already a good rank dog though, isn't she? Oh, there she comes. <laughs> there you go, that'll be a good shot. Kind of the special part about it too was obviously he lived at home, played at home, but then uh, the coaching staff brought on my brother and um, kind of made him a part of the team as well and let him help out here and there. It was something that I'll never forget. Yeah, so I think some of the staff will be here. Strando. Welcome back, dude. How's it going? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. When I was out at RPI, we weren't able to practice, lift weights, nothing like that. So Luke Strain, who's a head coach here in town, I played for him my last year here in town. And um, I just gave him one phone call and he said, yeah, you're more than welcome to come back. And initially the whole plan was just kind of me to come back and uh, skate with the guys, train to stay in shape and work on my skills. And he kind of threw out the idea of maybe hopping on the bench as a coach and helping out there. And, I ended up going through USA Hockey and getting my coaching license, and uh, next thing I knew I was on the bench. Uh, so it was, it was kind of neat, just throughout the week I'd be in full gear skating with the guys, practicing, and then on the weekends I was on a suit and tie with a coaching card and <laughs> helping out on the bench, so it was pretty unique. Good to see you. Yeah. We'll stay in touch. The biggest thing I learned from him is uh, kind of how infectious uh, coaching can be, uh, down to the players, and uh, just to lead every day with uh, purpose and passion. and. So that'll kind of trickle down to the players. So that was kind of the biggest thing. I think the greatest gift we can give anyone is making a positive impact in their lives. And I'm um, just trying to live that day to day. And I think within the North Dakota hockey, that's something that drew me there right away is, uh, I think that's something that's very valued within the culture there, the people side of it. And um, yeah, I just think I just try and bring that every day to the table and do that through my actions and words. Big thanks to Brady and his family, as well as Luke Strand and the Sioux City Musketeers for their hospitality. Good to see another South Dakota kid doing great things. 
Brady and his new team are back on the ice this weekend for another non-conference test. We'll set the scene for a top 20 clash with Bemidji State after this. Let's get you up to date on what's happening around college hockey, starting with a look at this week's USCHO.com poll. The top six are unchanged from last week, but that will likely change in the near future as three of the top five, Minnesota State, Michigan, and Minnesota Duluth, are all playing each other, as well as number 10 Providence, at the icebreaker this weekend at Amsoil Arena. UND moved up one spot to number seven, by the way, after their sweep of Niagara. Seven NCHC schools are in action this weekend, with the series drawing the most attention taking place in Minneapolis and St. Cloud. The second-ranked Huskies and fourth-ranked Gophers are set for a home-and-home -home big series there. The only other series between ranked teams in the league is also a home-and-home, -home, though this one's taking place on Highway 2 instead of I-94. It's number 7 North Dakota and number 20 Bemidji State, a pair of teams who just saw each other two weeks ago in exhibition play. Yeah, obviously I started a lot of games there over the last three years, so um, to kind of go through the whole experience, right, the Thursday night hotel, the um, Thursday night meal, the Friday morning skate, just everything uh, from the other side of it, it's definitely going to be weird, but um, kind of the same thing that I said after the exhibition game at the end of the day, it's just another hockey game, and um, you just don't treat it different, you just go out there and play the game, and once the puck drops, it's, you're just playing hockey. You can watch North Dakota take on the Beavers Friday night at 7 p.m. at the Sanford Center on flowhockey.tv. Then tune into Midcoast Sports Saturday for Game 2 at 6 p.m. from Ralph Anglesat Arena. That is our time for North Dakota Hockey Central this week. On behalf of our Midcoast Sports crew, I'm Alex Heinert. Enjoy the hockey this weekend, and I'll see you Saturday at the Ralph.